Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you don't know me, I'm Clark Keith and I'm a first year medical student studying at King's College London. So this video will be a first of a series called Everything You Need to Know About EMDP. The series basically it's it's aimed at those who are thinking of applying to EMDP or even those who are actually in the process of applying to EMDP as well. Having gone through that process and also being part of EMDP now, I thought it'll be quite useful just to you know put some videos out there. So this series will kind of consist of probably four videos maybe maybe five but we'll see this one in particular we'll be talking about basically just what is the EMDP comparing that to the standard course and then also we'll kind of talk about the requirements that you need and also the eligibility to be able to apply for EMDP so yeah let's get started Uh, so firstly, um, the EMDP and the standard course, the differences between that. And I'll put um, basically a kind of diagram here that I made. So as you can see, um, the standard course has got stage one, two and three. Stage one has only one year, stage two has years two and three, stage three has years four and five. Uh, in between stages two and three, you've got this optional intercalated BSc, which you can do. Again, that's optional. And that'll make it six years in total for the standard course, EMDP basically. What the main difference is, so stage one isn't anymore just one year, it's now two years. You basically half fit into into two different years now. So in year one, you study half of that content, and year two, you study the other half of that content. The aim is, is just to study stage one in a more slower kind of um, process, and it gives you time to do other things as well. The EMDP also provides uh, things like extra dosage calculations and uh, numeracy support and skills, and some chemistry and stuff. Also problem-based learning is also a uh, kind of thing that we do. There's quite a few differences. We'll, we'll go into those, the pros and cons of those differences in the next video, uh, where we compare the standard course and the main course and the pros and cons between them. four things you need to be eligible to apply for AMDP. The first one being is that um, you must have attended a non-selective state school. You can't have attended the grammar school um, or any school that requires you to sit an exam in order to enter it. The second one is you can't have started or completed a degree before you apply to EMDP. The third and fourth one, you have to have a home fee status. And the fourth one, and basically everyone applying to medicine will probably have this, is that you must have sat the UCAT before applying. Um, most, again, most people have done this, uh, if it's not a BMAT school either, or BMAT med school either. But yeah, so those are the eligible eligibility points that you, you must have in order to apply for EMDP. And once you have them, and then you'll be considered with the rest of the uh, requirements. Um, so yeah, now I'm moving on to the actual application. So in terms of grades, uh, compared that with the standard course, they look at A star AA. In EMDP, they just ask for um, ABB. Um, so that's a few grades lower. The UCAT, so this is just from what I've seen, the average that the standard course have um, in terms of the applicants, um, they've kind of, they're around 2,700. That's the average UCAT score for that. Um, but for EMDP, they mostly have an average of about like 2,400. And um, that's about the average for those applying for EMDP. So you, as you can see, it's a bit, it's, it's much lower. Um, even for other med schools, not even at King's, like the, that's way, that's much lower than the average. So let's say, you know, you, you got 2,400. That basically means you, you stand a decent chance for the EMDP. Um, so yeah, King's also do take into account GCSE. So the, the more A's and A stars you've got on GCSE, the better. But obviously, it's not the main factor. Uh, it's just something they also do look at. It's also um, particularly important when, um, let's say, some students have the same uh, interview score, or um, some students are very similar. They kind of do. They might use GCSE just to. Um, as a tiebreaker sometimes. A personal statement, it's kind of just as usual with the other med medical schools and also with the standard course. Um, it's important to talk about why you want to do medicine, um, the extracurriculars you have, which are also important, especially for Kings, as they kind of look for this. So also work experience, uh, quite obviously as well. They do, like again, most medical schools, they also look for work experience quite um, quite, quite a lot. Uh, in terms of interviews, um, it used to be MMI. Because of COVID, they changed it to panel. Um, and I think it's still that, uh, at least for this cycle uh, currently. So that's the 2021 to 2022 cycle. And I've, I'm not sure if they'll stay with that in the future. If they might change it, then I might make a, uh, a video. But so far, it's still the panel one. The type of things that they look at are personality-based attributes, 
like knowledge of topical medical issues so that could be you know covid itself or even um, the vaccination program um, done in the uk they also and this is this is nowadays for most interviews this isn't even just kings um they place a lot of emphasis on ethical reasoning um there's many resources that you can use to kind of um, prepare but my best advice uh, just on top of it all is just to practice practice with teachers and family uh, i think um, practicing with teachers is really important because i think they have a lot of resources to kind of set you up for a mock interview mock interviews are very useful and um, i would definitely do that you know i'll make a video separately on this it's going to be part of the series but um yeah that's basically all the the um stuff you need to know about the applications eligibility that and compared to the standard course if you've got any other questions do let me know on my instagram which i'll just put here let me know down in the comments if there's anything else you thought i could make in future videos or anything like that or i could add to this series i didn't really see many videos out there when i was applying so hopefully that uh, this series will kind of help those that are now applying in the future. I'll see you guys in the next video where we'll be comparing the pros and cons with the EMDP and the standard course. So yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.